Do you need help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph car dash insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal, and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. After 10 long years, the second generation Avanza, which has gone through updates here and there, bits and bobs here and there, is finally being retired. And we are being presented with the 2022 Toyota Avanza. And my goodness, I've got to say straight off the bat, it is a looker. So on today's video, we're going to take a walk around the automobile, do a little bit of driving, take you through the exterior and the interior as well, and the engine, and answer some some pretty important questions that people have had ever since that they put their eyes first on the second generation and the first generation of Anza. But before that, quick fact. Now, Toyota wants to be able to sell about 1,000 units of this uh, 2022 Avanza every month, which you might think is actually a pretty big number, but actually they had an even larger number in mind, but they did tone it back just a little bit. Uh, if you're a betting man, don't bet against Toyota on that because this second generation Avanza, when it was five years old, five years ago in 2017, it was still selling 1,300 units a month. So to reach 1,000 units a month with this face, I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Okay, so some of the questions that we want to be able to answer is number one, is it still compact and yet spacious? I have no idea how Toyota does it, but they did it with that. And I'm hoping they did it with this. Second is that, is it still fuel efficient? And third, of course, is it still affordable for everybody out there? So let's start with the front clip. And there's no other way of putting it, but it's just really a gorgeous front clip. You've got sleek headlamps, which are um, they're LEDs with halogen uh, fog lamps on a grill that's really, really massive. Now, I don't know if anybody else sees it, but when I look at it, I'm thinking an LC a Land Cruiser, right? Like if you were to take an LC and get it really, really wet and pop it in the dryer uh, twice, then that's actually what you would get. Although Jack did point out that it's probably closer to the, what the US market has, which is the Sienna. So if you look at a photo of that, it's actually quite similar. Whatever it is that they've done, I'm loving it. And by the way, this green color is actually pretty darn gorgeous. Down the side, you have now 16-inch alloys. Now, on the previous generation, the top of the line, which is what this is, the G, had 15-inch alloys. Now, the top of the line has 16-inch alloys. And then the top of the line, 15-inch alloys from the previous generation can now be found up and down the line of the Avanza. Down the side, we're going to take a look here. You've got repeaters on the side mirror. Uh, no chrome accents can be found on the sides of this particular car, much the same as the previous generation. But there are, shall we say, cheekbones to the car because it stretches. There's a line that stretches from the front all the way to the back, as if to suck it all in. And I quite like that. One thing that has changed dramatically, and I'm going to use the word dramatically, is that on the A pillar, there is now a quarter window. So it may not seem like much from the outside, but from the inside, as part, uh, uh, unlike the previous generation, your, your view of the road from the inside is unimpeded thanks to this particular window here. It's, it's something so small, but the, the advantages that you get from it is just absolutely massive. Now, moving on to the rear, you'll notice that the lights back here are similar to that up front because it's, it's sleek, it's slender, it's, uh, it's newer really, and it looks absolutely great on the automobile. It's like Toyota took all what was big when it comes to their lights and shrunk it down to make it look sophisticated and then took the rest of that real estate and shoved it on the front grille, which if you, you've seen it, right, it absolutely works. Then you've got a third brake light up here for maximum visibility and reflectors found down below. 
Now, uh, if you're wondering about the total size of the automobile, it is a little bit taller, a little bit wider, and also a little bit longer, but it's still compact nonetheless. It's not like the difference between an Avanza and an Innova. No, nothing like that at all. It's still definitely an Avanza in size. It's just that the wheelbase alone has increased by 105 millimeters. Now, that may not sound like much because it's really only about four inches, but that four inches translates to a lot of space inside, which I'm dying to show you. Oh, before we do, I need to show you the trunk space of this car, which is, I'm very excited about it. I'll, allow me to show you why. So the dimensions of the cargo space is roughly the same as the previous generation, possibly quite possibly a little bit less, only because in the previous generation, the third row, when tumbled, still kind of stuck out. This is the very first Toyota that I'm coming across in the Philippines, that when you fold the third row, if I can actually figure out how, it actually folds flat completely flat look at that none of this hanging to the side kind of a thing none of this tumbling down where it stands out a little bit eating cargo space but look at it it's completely flat that may not be much to a lot of people but to me it speaks quite literally volumes and liters of volume but anyway so i would like to congratulate toyota philippines on that that's a job well done i love it I absolutely, absolutely love it. Now let's go to the inside and show you what that possible 104 millimeters or four inches is like. So it's still a seven seater MPV. And as I get in, uh, the seats are roughly still the same. What's nice is that you sit a little bit taller. So that means your legs can come straight down, which gives you well, a, a little bit more uh, leg room actually. And then the headroom is maybe about two, three inches. Um, what's nice is that back here now, the third row has a actually a 12 volt socket. Oh, I'm opening it the wrong way. A 12 volt socket and a ball holders on either side. Now to move into the second row, which is actually pretty easy, uh, the one thing that you'll notice is that the seats are no longer 50-50 split like the previous generation. Now, it's actually a 60-40. And well, that allows you to have a center armrest, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, other toys back here include not one, but two USB charging points that are both 2.1 amperes found underneath. No air vents found down there because the air vents are up on top. It's a new configuration where the controls are in the dead center, and then your air vents are here and here, and then the direction of the air can be controlled with these flaps here, much like the flaps of an airplane, actually, that uh, changes the direction of the wind. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that, looks, looks quite beefy. And then, of course, the uh, tunnel is very low so that if you are a third passenger, it's actually quite easy, really. It's quite easy. The material, soft, durable, nothing harsh, um, bottle holders on either door, and cup holders as well, new cup holders on the door, up here, found up here. Uh, that will do it for the second and third row. Oh, I'm sorry, there is one other thing that I wanna point out that Toyota is actually pretty proud of, and it's called the long sofa mode. Now, this is only for really the second passenger, but I found that you could technically have a long sofa mode for the people in the back if you were like had legs of like Manute Ball or something like that. Allow wow, I'm really dating myself, Manute Ball. I could have said Shaquille O'Neal, but I said Manute Ball. Anyway, let me show you some of the cool stuff that you can do when you remove some of these items and have a bit of fun inside the Avanza. So this isn't, Toyota did not say that I should do this, but I'm just gonna show you anyway, that if you fold the second row, you could actually stretch out, right? So if you have legs that are longer than Heidi Klum's, yet again, I'm carbon dating myself, you could actually stretch out and still put on a seat belt while you do it, see? So that's just one. It's not very comfortable, but I'm just saying that it's possible. Now, the real, long sofa mode is actually pretty darn cool. 
uh, I'm gonna, that's not it. I'm gonna return this to its proper position right there. So this is the space that I have. But then what's cool is that if you remove the headrest, Joey, could you come up front and help me? If you remove the headrest of that, that up front and then put that down, check me out. This is considered long sofa mode. Look, I can even put on my seat belt. Now, normally I'd say that uh, this space is so big enough that you can Netflix and chill. But then I was just recently found out that Netflix and chill means something completely different. Only because I'm a boomer and I did not know. So maybe not chill, maybe just Netflix, no chilling. Jack, I'm talking to you, man. Magpakasal ka muna. What do you call this? So that is the... It's, oh, Joey, I can't put it in. You're gonna have to push this guy down a little bit. Yeah, to let that in. So it's still quite actual, actually spacious back here. And of course the seats do move forward and back, which is nice. That's my normal driving position. And this in this position right here, there is no space for the third row. So if I wanted to be a bit generous uh, and not be such a jerk, this would probably be a lot of space already for me. And the space in the rear, yeah, still good space. So. Uh, carrying seven passengers, not an issue at all. Let's move up to the front. Both the G and E variants have a reverse camera and rear sensors. The G, however, is also equipped with blind spot monitoring, rear traffic alert, vehicle stability control, six airbags, and of course, Isofix tethers. Now, some of the biggest changes will obviously be for the driver. And it's a completely new dash with new materials and whatnot. It's still plastic and still scratchy plastics, but at least uh, they feel a little bit better. And it's a completely new design. And it just, obviously it feels much newer. It doesn't feel as dated anymore. And you don't see as much chrome inside this cabin as you did with the previous generation. You've got a lot of textures, a lot of different uh, colors as well that vary from dark black, dark black? No, just black and dark gray. Dark gray is what I was going at. So let's uh, give you a rundown of what it is exactly that I'm looking at. First and foremost, you have got analog gauges that flank a 4.1 uh, digital trip meter. You've got buttons on your steering wheel on a steering wheel that's similar to a Raze actually, now that I think about it. Oh, speaking of Raze, if you haven't seen our video of the walk around of Raze, which is actually pretty awesome, click somewhere on the screen, it, it should be there. And the Raze is actually quite important to this Avanza and I'll explain that to you closer to the end of the video. But anyway, yeah, shall we continue? Yeah. So, uh, buttons on your steering wheel for your trip and your audio controls. One of the biggest changes is this 10-inch uh, monitor, which is touchscreen. Uh, on the previous generation, it should have it was kind of integrated, but it kind of looked like a block of ice that was sticking out kind of a thing. Now it's actually a panel that kind of still sticks out a lot, but it's more like a panel. The thing though is, is it doesn't stick out way too much that you think it's actually gonna get in the way of your field of vision, which I actually thought when I first saw the automobile. But as I'm sitting here, I can tell you that the height of the panel doesn't go beyond this particular area of the dashboard, so that my view is still very much unimpeded. So you've got your Android and Apple capabilities in there, including your reverse camera. And then found underneath, or rather below that, is digital air controls, which I think is kind of swanky. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then a start stop engine function button, which I think is also pretty swanky. Um, 12 volt socket found down here, and then a cubby hole. Cup, so, sorry, you wanna see the cubby hole? It's very tiny, it's very, here's the key. It's very wee. Not wee gamboa, I mean small, it's, it's wee. Um, the one thing I noticed is that um, the cup holder situation in here may have diminished by ever so slightly because I remember that there were like two or three cup holders up here, but they seem to have moved a few of them around the cabin and made it old school too because now you can chill your drink whilst it being secure inside the car. There's one there. There's a perpetual one here on the driver's side. And then of course, bottle holders on either door. So we have answered the question that is it spacious? Yes, it's still definitely spacious inside a compact vehicle. The next question we wanna be able to answer is, well, is it fuel efficient? Well, we gotta go to the engine for that. 
Underneath, you will find two different types of engines. Not at the same time, don't be silly. Um, how do you open this? Okay, so for this 1.5G, or rather the G, you will find a 1.5 liter mated to a CVT. That's very, very important because the previous generation, the top of the line, was only mated to a four-speed automatic transmission. Now, all the automatic transmissions of the 2022 model and up are all going to be held, or rather going to be paired with a CVT. Now, that engine produces 105 horses and 138 newton meters of torque. Now, that's for the 1.5. The 1.3 liter engine produces, obviously, much less. Another huge change, apart from the uh, transmission, is that the pre... Who opened the hood of this guy? Anyway, the, the engine of that guy was longitude, it was lengthwise. Now it's crosswise, meaning the power is sent to the front wheels. A very, very big change. Now, this being the 1.5G, the top of the line, is not the most fuel efficient one that Toyota claims that they have, but it's darn close. Actually, the more fuel efficient one is the 1.3 liter uh, mated to a CVT. Now, claimed by Toyota, mixed with highway and city, it can do 20.8 kilometers per liter, which is redonkulous, and that's mixed city and highway. This 1.5G can do 20.4, so not that far. Does it do 20.4 uh, at all? Well, we're going to give you some figures. Uh, right now, as I was filming this right now, I have no idea, but anything close to that would be a miracle. Unfortunately, we're not gonna get a lot of it because, well, it's the middle of the week and we are stuck inside Metro Manila, so there's traffic. But wait, speaking of traffic, why not? Let's test it, let's go for a drive. Does anybody know we're gonna take this for a car? That uh, we're gonna take this for a drive? Did we tell Toyota? Let's, let's not tell them. Let's just, let's return it with a couple of hundred kilometers. On this very short drive that we're on, and I do mean short because back and forth we're going to cover roughly about 12 kilometers, there's still well, uh, an Avanza characteristic to the car, in that sense that, well, the NVH is, uh, it, it, the road noise still comes in and it's still a little bouncy on uneven roads. But the beauty about it is, is that it's gotten better. So it's not as bouncy and it's not as noisy. It's definitely an improvement to the previous generation. So there is definitely that. And the fact that it, it just feels so much nicer to, to be in this generation than the previous generation because, well, I understand that it is a compact MPV and it is uh, at a price range that is made more affordable, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to make the car look like it's extremely affordable, right? I'm not saying also it's upmarket, but it's just, in general, you don't feel you don't feel luge is what I'm trying to get at when you're driving this automobile. It feels, it feels pleasant to drive, and 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 oh, the visibility. I I mentioned that earlier. The the windows, it it really does help a lot. The windows are all of that wide, right? But the amount of of visibility that it helps you uh, keep in constant contact with the road, it helps a lot. It helps quite a lot actually. Those windows, little but awesome. I like them. The big question obviously will be fuel efficiency. So uh, I think it was perfect that we were stuck in this traffic that we're in now, right now to try and figure out the fuel efficiency. So um, like I said, we've only traveled a total, will have traveled a total of like 12 kilometers. Um, the total time that we've traveled in these 12 kilometers would roughly be about I ain't messing around about an hour and a half. So I guess from that, you can gauge just exactly how bad traffic is. But in that amount of time and in that crawling pace, with 50% uh, of it, it was just me and Jack, the other 50, it's just me inside the car. The, the trip computer tells me that we were doing about 9.9 .9 kilometers per liter. So obviously it's pretty darn good inside the city and heavy traffic. So I'm excited actually to see what it actually can do on the open road or like on the highway. I'm also excited to see just exactly how much quieter or even noisier it may have become out on the highway. 
it does not by any means necessary have a premium sound system. The speakers are factory, right? But we did some tweaking around and we got it to levels that were actually pretty good that made us say, yeah, okay, it works, it works. It's not like a system inside more expensive automobiles where you have Harman Kardon or Bose speakers and whatnot, but you know, it's for its price range, it's not bad. It's not really not bad at all. So we've answered the question of space. It's still compact, very much compact, and still offers a lot of space on the inside, like magic. We've also answered the fuel efficiency question, which is, it's actually pretty darn fuel efficient. The last question is, price. Well, I can confirm that the Toyota Avanza starts at just over 800,000 Philippine pesos. And then the top of the line, this 1.5 liter GCVT comes in at 1,039,000 Philippine pesos. Now, if you were paying attention earlier, I mentioned the Toyota Rays and how that would be important in this video, simply because they're of the same price range. Now, a lot of journalists, including myself, we're kind of worried for Toyota, thinking that each car would eat into each other's market. But the truth is, they serve two different markets altogether. One, which is the race, now, and I, I know I did this, sorry, but one, the race, serves a more single lifestyle, a younger lifestyle, maybe perhaps a driver and a companion at most. While as the Avanza, it's more a family vehicle where you can bring your entire family along with all the space that you need to bring your, well, most of your worldly possessions. And that is the market for this gorgeous looking Avanza. Now, I'm gonna say this in closing that it is not a quantum leap from the previous generation. There's still a lot of it that when I was driving it, I could still feel the, the, the previous Avanza. There have been improvements, however, but I, again, I'm saying it's not a quantum leap. However, I will say that it is definitely a worthy successor. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe. See you soon.